I hated taking care of my child. I felt like I was a mess. I did hate my own child. A recent research on demographic, psychosocial, and clinical factors associated with postpartum depression in Kenyan women showed that out of the 171 women who were fallen for 6 to 10 weeks postpartum, 18.7% were found to have postpartum depression using an Indobag postpartum depression scale cutoff EPDS of 10. Data by Postpartum Support International Perinatal Mood and Anxiety Disorders Fact Sheet shows that 15 to 21% of pregnant women experience moderate to severe symptoms of depression. Postpartum depression, also called postnatal depression, is a type of mood of a disorder associated with childbirth which can affect both sexes. As a mother of three, Pascal Injeri realized she was struggling with caring for her newly born second baby, who apparently was colic, denying her time to sleep or even rest. When I got my second baby, I realized that things were not okay. So I realized that I had become very emotional. I had struggled, I started struggling through motherhood. Um, at some point, I think it's because at some point my child became such a crybaby. Oblivious of her current state entrenched in her new solitary personality, Pascaline began having negative thoughts since she felt her husband was not being supportive enough. So I became uh, very negative in life. I became I started having negative thoughts. It always used to be, I'm very overwhelmed. I'm not sure I can take care of this baby. I'm not sure I'm a good enough mother. Um, and. And I felt like my husband was not offering as much support as I expected from him. Uh, but now thinking about it, you see for him, he was doing what he thought was enough support for me. However, for my side, there is those things that I considered as help and support from him. Her condition was so severe that at one point she almost crushed and hated taking care of her child. There's a time I almost crashed because I did not see a car coming and I almost got hit. It was the I need help moment. I need help because I'm not okay. I hated taking care of my child because every time I would need to take care of them, it meant that they need so much from me in terms of time and me being there for them, yet I was not okay myself. So I did not have the slightest energy to take care of them. Irrespective of all her precautionary measures to avoid being pinched, Geraldine Moirori still found herself pinned in the same corner. She avoided and millions of questions raised in her mind. So, for me, that one time that went things haywire and then I found myself pregnant even after all those morning after and everything. How do people get pregnant in this day and age? Like, how do you ever even have unplanned pregnancies, you know? And I was like, there's um, family planning, there's the morning after. How? Due to hard economic times, colic baby, financial constraints, and severe pain, since she underwent cesarean birth, Geraldine says her mom was the only support system, and she one time felt like jumping out of the moving car and die for she felt like a lesser mom. The father of my child decided not to be part of the child's uh, life, of which I don't blame him because none of us was prepared for it. There was a time I'd feel like I want to just jump out of a moving car and die. I loved my child so much <laughs> that I felt I'm not being mom enough. I felt like I was a lesser mom. With Bridget Caveza, her story is no different from Geraldine's. I realized I have depression when I gave birth about like two months after. It was so hard for me because I was a first-time mom and the pregnancy was unplanned. As a new mom, without any prior experience or knowledge of pregnancy or child winning, Bridget struggled so much to an extent of neglecting her son. For two good years, she did this without having chills about it. It consumed me for about two years. At some point, I started feeling funny towards my own son. He could cry, but 
I just assume he could do something or be in diapers, maybe be wet, but I used to assume everything. There are some times that I used to ignore him completely, get out of the house, go do my own stuff for hours, come back later and try not to feel anything that I did wrong for him. It is true that I did at some point hit my own child. Before I hated him, I hated myself. I hated everything that was around me. I used to feel like he's here to make my life become more harder than it was before. Because when, when you have a child, he depends or she depends fully on you in everything. Plagued with postpartum depression, financial constraints and colic babies, these mothers now have something to smile about. They all got help and decided to give back to the society. And we have reached more than 450 people through ground events. We have been able to cancel 31 mothers. We have our WhatsApp group, support group, which has 150 moms. And uh, so our projects are around educating mothers so that they understand Besides the physical well-being of a new mom and a pregnant mom, there's also the mental aspect to it that we need to also understand so that they know if I'm feeling like this, you need help, you need to check with a counsellor whether you're okay and if you're okay then you're fine but if you're not okay then you're able to get help. At Mommy's Touch we look at the wholesome well-being, it's about the health, the wealth and the well-being of the mom and the child so that then we raise a healthy generation which means when you're healthy then the economic status are better we have organizations like zawadi mama you can find them on facebook and instagram whereby we meet and forget about our troubles talk to each other talk with each other share our problems and be better like i am right now monica ngatua Clinical psychologist points out how postpartum depression manifests itself and its diagnostic procedures. We could classify them in three or four um, reasons why we think and believe that postpartum depression happens in, in the mothers. Number one, there could be a genetic predisposition, which um, there is history of mental illness in uh, in the family and. Also, there is, like, especially families that have had people suffering from bipolar disorder, mood disorder, then there's someone who's likely to suffer the depression bit because bipolar has the depressive bit and the manic bit. And also, there is what there is the environment that the, the, the mom is surrounded with. She could be uh, living in a very strenuous of uh, environment emotionally physically financially so every single day is is a struggle to live so that one would send them into depression another thing they might have suffered depression before and so it just comes back to in this time because there's so much that they're doing when the patient comes to the hospital the first thing you want to rule out the physical uh, the physical causes which uh, they do a test for thyroid function if the thyroid function isn't functioning properly then it means uh, they are presenting with the symptoms of depression and the second one is they do a depression inventory test and you 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 go you're taken through a series of questions and series of tests and assessments to determine whether you are suffering from PTSD so once it is determined that you are actually suffering from, not PTSD, but PPD. Once you're suffering, it's determined, then the treatment uh, begins. And there are two forms of treatment. There's psychotherapy and there's medication, which is pharmacotherapy. The high prevalence of significant postnatal depression symptoms among Kenyan women underscores the need for addressing this public health burden. Depression screening and psychosocial support interventions that address partner conflict resolution should be offered as part of the maternal health care. I would wish that the Ministry of Health, we have these clinic books that we are given at the start of the journey. 
if they could only include most of the the book is about the child most of the time yeah but if only they would include a page that has maybe pointers to look out for how the mom is like what's her well-being what's her state what environment is she in then it would be easy to know for example this mom is going to go into depression or this mom is going through depression and hospitals have therapists nutritionists the same way they send when they find a child is malnourished they send you to a nutritionist then from the questions on the book then they would send one to a therapist early enough before it went to psychosis then the other stakeholders like the employers um, what what if a mom comes back because after the three months they come back after leave and they're suffering depression postpartum depression so how do you support? It's always good that there is that bit that the moms are supported even at workplace. I'm glad some organizations are doing that while others are yet to do that. While we have reasons as to why we do the things that we do, it's clear enough from this story above that no mother in their right saying they would ever want to harm their children. That's incumbent on each and every one of us to judge less and understand more. For I254 TV, I'm Dereva Hilary.